Hey, um, can I just get a show of hands again? How many people are using check-in services currently? So you still check in and stuff like that? How many have ever used check-in services at least once? Oh, it's a few more. Okay, just curious. Um, the company is named Echo Echo, and our focus is a little bit different. We're trying to be not a game, not a dating service, we're trying to be a utility. And we're trying to ask and answer the question, we're trying to get the easiest way to ask and answer the question, where are you with your friends, with your close friends? Um, doing that, just to make sure. There we go. So, let's bring up some stats to begin with. Microsoft did a study that came out in December, which is quite interesting. 18% of smartphone users have used LBS. I'm betting that about 53 of that percent is using Yelp. Uh, almost everybody's used Google Maps, but that's not Google Maps. We're talking about check-in services like the Yelp, Foursquare, stuff like that. They use some form of location-based service. Um, of those people, less than 10% find them useful. Useful in the sense of connecting them with something that, they ma that matters to them. Now, this is the check-in portion, not necessarily the map lookup of the location portion, which is somewhat useful. The number one concern is privacy. The number one concern for users is privacy. And that concern goes up dramatically when you're talking about businesses. If they're sharing with people, they're concerned about privacy. But if they're concerned with businesses, they're very concerned about privacy. So in a world like that, you want to build apps that are simple, useful, and private. Otherwise, people won't use them. Fun is a nice thing to add, but if you get simple, useful, and private right, you can do it right. The problem is the privacy cloud simplicity. Now, why is that? Well, because there is a segment of the population, many of them are under 18, many of them have smartphones, that doesn't mind letting you know where they are at any given point in time. They just Privacy is out the window. You know, they're the Facebook generation, they're the YouTube generation, whatever you want to call it, they don't care. But then there's another large portion of the population, it's like, let's call it 90%, 95%, who really do care still. And in their way making decisions, they want it to be simple, but they really want it to be private. And to be private is tough. Let's talk about caller ID. So, my friend Gary Gale from Nokia calls me up, and I'm talking on the phone. This is a fairly important call. I like Gary. And then my wife calls. Okay, so I have a caller ID. I see it's my wife calling. I'm deciding how do I decide whether or not I take that call? So if I had settings that combine that caller ID action, what would they look like? Think about this, because this is going towards location. And would we use them? So, I can go into the cloud, I can go program up here, I'm going to connect calls from girlfriends, always, well, after 5 p.m. on weekends, because I'm not going to be working then, or between 12 noon and 1.30. I mean, seriously, could the changes as you go along. Your, your wife could be pregnant. Well, that could change that. Uh, your wife could just have had an accident, you're worried about her at home. Uh, your wife could, you know, could know that your wife's picking up kids from school, if she calls about 3 o'clock, that's kind of important. It's very dependent. So, what we've learned is, Color ID decisions are not just personal, they're not just contextual, and they're not just temporal, they're all of the above. That makes them really tricky. That's why you can't do a cloud-based solution. Where are you? So if I was asking a good friend, I know Thor pretty well, if I was asking where are you, you know, how would you decide whether or not to answer me? You probably want a service that's going to be simple, private, and useful. So let's look at the services that are out there right now that are doing most of this. I didn't put Yelp on there. Um, most of because I look at them, I use them uh, primarily to look at restaurants when I want to get ratings to find out where I'm going, especially if I'm in a new place like San Francisco or something like that, it's awesome. Um, but the other people that are out there, like the check-in services, the Foursquare's, the Facebooks, I consider that a check-in, uh, Loot, Gowalla, these guys share your location with just about everybody. So you don't mind checking into a location, but when you're checking in, it's a very public thing. And people are tending to use check-in less and less. They're not just checking in the Starbucks, they're not just checking everywhere they go, because they're using it more of a status thing. That's what's tending to happen now. I'm checking in the Canucks game because I want my friends to know it's the Canucks game, or I'm checking in at the opera because I want people to think I'm culture. They're not actually checking in everywhere they go. So in terms of finding my friends, check-in has now become somewhat useless because I don't really care what Bob was.
was yesterday, let alone, you know, where he was last week. He might have checked in half an hour, or maybe, but even then, do I still know if he's there? So it's not really that useful. And it's also not very private. Then you have people like Google who have a service called Latitude, which will drain your battery and is kind of real time, but it collects a lot of data for you, for Google, and brings up the whole question of who owns what data where. So um, we don't want to get into that. Now, if I was trying to use cloud-based preferences to control my location, I'm going to end up in a little bit of the same quandary. So my girlfriend wants to know where my location is. Now, if she calls me to find out my location, I can control that because I can decide not to take the call but it's controlled on my handset. Could I set those preferences in the cloud? After 5 p.m. on weekend, she can know where I am, or maybe I don't mind her knowing where I'm at during the day when I'm working. But those are really tough decisions. You can't program that. They change from time to time. They're temporal as well. So the ultimate thing would be to have a device-based preferences. The idea would be that you would have control of your device, like you have when a call comes in. When a call comes in, you decide right then and there if you're going to take a call or not. And that's what we've tried to develop. So the appearance of location is not personal, it's not contextual, and it's not temporal. Once again, it's all of the above. Um, we didn't do all this research, by the way, I should give some credit where credit's due. Dana Boyd, who works as a special researcher for Microsoft New England, and works uh, has a doctorate from Harvard and still works there. She did all this, and she did a lot of social media studies on the social interactive studies, not social media, social interactive studies on this. And this is uh, developed research. So, simple, private, useful. But not everybody believes a PhD, they don't know everything. So, ask yourself how do I find my friends right now? All these location services out there right now. How do I find my friends when we're meeting up? Do I use check in? No. Do I use Google Latitude? Heck no. How do I, do, how do I tell them when I'm running late? How do I tell them what, when I just want to check in if I'm in the area? Some people will call and the majority will text. So let's think about that interaction. Let's, let's think about the interaction. So I say, I text Thor. I said, Thor, you know, I'm, I'm over in campus. Are you around? He goes, yeah, I'm around. I say, oh, great. Um, do you have some time? Yeah, do I have some time? Do you want to meet for coffee? Sure. No, actually, I'd rather go for food. I'm kind of hungry. Okay, well, um, you know, that's a lot of text messages going back there. The odds are that I'm probably going to be in my car and driving because if I'm in Yale Town and I'm just across the bridge from him, I'm paying per minute for the parking and it's going to be kind of expensive, so I'll probably have started driving home by the time I get the last text message just saying, wow, I'd really like to buy you a drink. Now, for that, I turn around, but <laughs> unless he says that, I'm not coming back. So, <clears throat> we decided to create a service which allows you to do just that with control and privacy, and we automated it. So, Dominica wants to know where I am. She sends a simple echo, and it pops up on my screen, and I say that. I go in, I see that she's over here, and I'm over here. Then I say, oh wow, um, let's, uh, I'd like to meet up. She's coming to town, that's great. Let's find something in between us. Let's go to Joe's Pizzeria. I click that. It selects Joe's, passes over her, she gets a pop-up notification, she sees, okay, the demo doesn't look too good because it's cast into Giuseppe, but the, the actual service works much better than that. Uh, and she can either accept the meeting or discuss it. The idea being that we're automating an interaction. Now she accepts Captain Giuseppe, I get a notification back she's, that she's accepted, and boom, we've got the meeting set for, for Captain Giuseppe too. For, actually for Joe's piece, we're back to Joe's piece, thank goodness. So, what have we done here? We've actually replaced, with two clicks on each side, about seven or eight text messages from each side. And that's, you, 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 that's useful. We haven't given up anything in terms of privacy. We've made it happen much faster. So we've saved people time. We would argue that the only way to do this is with the device-based preferences. I'm sure there's lots of people that are going to argue that you can do this stuff on the cloud. But when it comes down to your closest friends, where do you have their information? Guaranteed, I would make sure that every person has their wife's, their best, their, their, their closest colleagues and their closest friends in their address book on their phone. You probably haven't memorized yet. I unfortunately have to admit that I probably couldn't actually tell you what my sister's phone number is. It's in, it's in the phone, but it's not in the head anymore. 
So that's, that's the trick. So we have the information in our address book and we want a simple way to do it. We don't want to have to go through a registration process. We just want to have it there when we want it. And that's what we've developed. Um, a couple of other things which we've put into the thing. Once you actually are able to share your location very quickly, um, one of the things that becomes important is the ability to automate that process. Because yeah, nobody ever wants to be interrupted every time they want to share a location. Uh, for my wife, I once again, so we set a sort of profile. I don't have an actual example of how that flips across, so I don't know if everybody can see it. But I go into the app and I pop up.